Absolutely fantastic. And this is why in the morning on that hashtag, which is why in the morning as well, at 4244 underscore channel on the ground, verified at Brian Sakona one. And by the way, we are also on threads. <laughs> if you have not yet joined threads, man, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure, okay? But that's where you can find us as well. And remember to also check us out on TikTok at 4244 channel. Personally, is at Brian Sakona 101. This is the first and also the last conversation of the day. And today's conversation is best, you know, the spirit of what's going on in the country how savvy are you how do you understand your leadership and especially when it comes to it being guided by the powerful constitution uh, right now we have the 2010 constitution do you know about it but the article 37 is the one that has been actually read a lot you've had you heard of it a lot especially in the recent times of manda manus of course expected again to continue tomorrow and uh, joining us uh, live in studio with us we have a powerful guest she's an author she's a lawyer she's a founder and she's written a powerful book that should definitely check it out and buy it at uh, she'll she'll be telling us where you can find it if it, maybe she's giving it for free you could get it as a gift as well so Stay right here. Joining us live in studio with us once again is Sandra Ochola. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. How nice are you feeling? Nice to meet you too. Sorry? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh -huh. I thought it would be colder this morning, but I guess because I was rushing through traffic, so uh -huh. I'm feeling warm there's, and There's energetic. just a certain adrenaline that comes with, you know, being stuck on traffic yes. and you know you have a meeting. Exactly. You're like, I Jesus, I have 15 it. minutes. Move, move, move. But you made it on Something, time. Yes. You made it on time. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. So, so let's start off from like, how did you become the person that you are today? Before we even get to your book and matters, the constitution, like mm. what is your journey like? Are there parts that you definitely can share with us? Uh, I am a lawyer, as you mentioned. Uh, my background is in law. I have a degree in law from Moy University and a postgraduate diploma from the Kenya School of Law. And then I later on went for a master's degree in international studies. So I started my career in the civil society space mm -hmm. and uh, uh, working with institutions and organizations that focus on governance and human rights. And uh, my internship way back, a while back, as we mentioned, it's been a couple of years, was okay. with the International Center for Transitional Justice. And I got introduced into the sector by wonderful, wonderful mentors um, mm. along the way. So okay. from um, ICTJ, as it was called, I moved to an institution called South Consulting. And as it happened, uh, it was during the time when the country was going through the 2007, 2008 uh, peace and reconciliation processes. And no. part of what we were doing was monitoring the implementation of uh, what was called, I don't know if you remember that, what the uh, Kofi Annan. Uh, right. the, Kofi the mediation Annan. situation yes, that happened. Yes, the mediation that situation. So there were agenda mm -hmm. items that were agreed upon as right. the country was uh, pursuing peace and so that is what the institution was doing okay. in terms of implementing uh, monitoring the implementation of those agenda items and so right. I spent a good um, number of years there and as it will happen uh, some of or part of the items that uh, I was monitoring were issues to do with uh, institutional reforms right. and part of it was co uh, the constitutional process okay. and then moving there I went to an institution called Katiba Institute which right. I looking back I'm really grateful for because which also that, inspires your book. Yes because right. they're the ones who actually supported it and uh, helped me in the publishing and helped me launch my first um, book launch, which right. was really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I worked with various other organizations within the civil society space. I did a little bit of politics thereafter and uh, then joined the public service and now looking to work more with um, or looking to work, in addition to that, looking to work with young people in terms of right. promoting law-related and constitutional education amongst young people. Right. So it's been uh, a number of years, but right. very engaging. You, you very mentioned 12, almost yes. 12 now. Almost 12 now, I think 12, yes. Right. Almost 12 Which is now. a good amount for a profession. Uh, uh, yes. Th th there's this book by Robin Sharma. He talks about the 10,000 hours, which mm. is equal to 10 years or exactly. a decade. For you to be a master at what you do mm -hmm. in any space, you need at least 10 good years. 10 good years. So in so short, you're a master of <laughs> your art. <laughs> in one or two things, I'd say. But right. it's, been, it's, been quite, it's been quite an interesting and very fulfilling, largely fulfilling journey, if I could use that word. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a point in your explanation you mentioned uh, 
constitution institutional reforms yes and uh if you, if you look at the situation that we have right now going on in our country there are so many places that are tilted and uh there's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. but then uh in the spirit of what's going to happen tomorrow hopefully it won't happen that's my prayer there's a lot of things that need to be put on the table for young people to know if you know you're signing up before you go to these demonstrations so are there things that need to be clear to you L leave, leave alone even just uh people going to the streets uh, i love the fact that your book is speaking to now young minds yes. teenagers now yeah. a guide to make them understand why is it important for young people to know and understand their rights uh, I, I believe it boils down to the purpose of law in society and law broadly um, has the function to uh, help people solve disputes, it has a function to help uh, marginalized communities um, mobilize and uh, fight for equality and just to more or less improve uh, their lot in life. And then it also has the purpose of social control. So if you look at the, these functions of the law, the functions that uh, the law uh, fulfills within society, and then you look at the role of the youth in ensuring that they know the law, in ensuring that one, they do not um, go against the law, and which is some of the instances we have now. We have young people getting into more problems with the law, going against the law, and you end up you know, having yourself a cl criminal record. That should not be happening when you know your rights. If you're from a marginalized community, for instance, and of course, young people are already placed in a category where they are considered um, vulnerable, if I can use that word. How are you using the law to improve on your situation in life? Okay. The Constitution already provides that young people should be given opportunities for them to participate fully in the economic, social, political, and cultural spheres of, li of, of our lives. And right. all through the Constitution, it also has uh, provisions that talk about non-discrimination, equality, uh, right. sustainable development, issues that actually touch even on gender. the youth. Even gender. Even yeah. gender, yeah. Mm -hmm. Issues that actually touch on the youth and yeah. are set to ensure that the future generations of our country are, 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 are taken care of and their welfare is promoted. So okay. how do you as a young person use the information you have, use those provisions, use the opportunities you have to improve your lot and to ensure that uh, your actions and your activities are building into that future right. moving forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting, interesting insight right there. But then uh, your book is centered on teenagers. Yes. But uh, uh, for me, for me, I think it's, uh, it's uh, well, well, I, I did a screen, uh, uh, quick scan through to it. I think it's meant for everyone. It's Even <laughs> adults as well can read, according exactly. to my understanding. Yeah. All right, so uh, why teenagers though? Do you feel like maybe they're not uh, as included as much when it comes to maybe serious conversation? Because uh, a, a conversation about the constitution is serious it's, for, it's, for a It's for everyone, ideally. Uh -huh. And um, knowing the law, knowing what the law provides, knowing the, the, the function of law in society, it should be for everyone mm -hmm. because it impacts all of us and all the sectors of, uh, all the sectors of society and all sectors of community. Uh -huh. The problem comes in where there's very low legal literacy and there's right. very low constitutional, um, li constitutional literacy. And the okay. attempts that are being made to improve this situation are mm. oftentimes being made with or for and by adults. Right. And that takes me back to the reason as to why, the, some of the motivations as to why I wrote, I wrote the book. And you remember, uh, mentioned, I remember I mentioned where my career started in the civil society. Right. And during a period when Kenya was going through a lot of upheaval in terms of uh, restructuring its social and political, its political spaces. And right. so right from the post-election violence, you realize that it was young people who suffered the most. You realize right. it was young people who are going out on the streets. Much of what we are still seeing today Right. And then we have the constitution, and uh, the constitution now is being, the literature out there is being, um, um, uh, the information and the literature is being designed and disseminated only for adults. Right. And then at that particular time, if you have a 14-year-old, even today, if you have a 14-year-old, uh, 14 or 15-year-old, mm -hmm. in about five years, this young man or this young lady will become an adult and right. then you're given your ID and you're given your voter's card come 2027 20, and you're told, right. okay, now you can go, to <laughs> <the world. Yeah. laughs> go to the world. Now you can uh -huh. vote and uh -huh. uh, you can even stand for office because now the constitution, uh, the constitution requires that Grants of you. you so know. there's uh -huh. a lot of voter education, right. but there isn't political education. 
of voter education, political education. Voter education and, and political, political education. education. And I feel that also applies to also the, the other side as well, not just for us, the netizens, or what you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, there's people who actually have no idea what they're doing. They're just implementing things, and exactly. then the ripple effect is now the suffering that exactly. we're going through right now. Exactly, right? because we say, we, say, we say information is power. Uh -huh. If you do not have it, then you do not know how to use it. Yeah. Right. So you can, we can have a constitution, but right. then if people are not reading it, if people are not engaging in it, if people are not defending it, if people are not implementing it, then it becomes just another document on the shelves. And right. that is why it is important because it holds such value for us as a community. It holds such value for us as a society and as a generation that right. its implementation is what is meant now to move, at, move us to the next levels in terms right. of development, in terms of uh, peace, in terms of security, t in terms of equality. So it's right. critical, mm -hmm. critical that Every person out there right. knows what the Constitution provides, knows how they can use the, con uh, the, the Constitution. It's especially critical for the younger generation because right. then they're laying foundations for the kind of life that they're going to live right. moving right. forward. For the future. Yeah. And they say that they, our children, is it? Is it Whitney Houston who sang the, our, the children are the future? So we are the one. <laughs> yeah, also yes, that, that one as well. You got it, you got <laughs> it, you got it. But then yeah. uh, in, in this book, uh, yeah. basically for... Maybe a teenager who will happen to land on this book at the bookstore. You'll also tell us if it's available in town yes. or any outlets as well. Uh, in summary, what do you want them to get from this book? Because it, it, it's all about cons the Constitution exactly. as well, knowing your rights, your freedoms, your boundaries, your limitations. Mm -hmm. But then we'll, we'll also get to that adage that says where your freedom begins, that's where it ends. Yeah. You'll tell us more about <laughs> that. But now, for the teenager who will land on this book, what do, they, what do you want them to pick? From this. The book, uh, it's called The Teen's Guide right. to the Constitution of Kenya. Right. And so it's a simplified version of the Constitution for young people. So right. you look at it co its contents, yeah. it's meant to simplify what the Constitution provides. And in simplifying what the Constitution provides, the language has been changed from right. the technical provisions or the technical uh, and the legalese that the Constitution has into right. language that um, a teenager and a young people can... Uh, can relate with. And right. then secondly, it's been made very attractive for the sorry, very attractive for the age group in right. terms of making it colorful, using illustrations, and then the activity sections as well, right. where young people can now do uh, sessions to help internalize the contents of the book and to help them engage with others. Because in the book, you're going to see there's group work, uh, yeah. there's um, working with an older person, working with a... Uh, working with a um, say, a parent. I'll give mm. you an example of the... Um, the chapter on public service, because that's, right. that's another, if adults don't understand the public service, for instance, and the right. image perhaps is that public servants are this way and that way. Right. Imagine what a young boy or a young girl thinks the about it. The perception now. The perception. Mm -hmm. So then, say in the chapter of the public service, one of the activities, we talk about the principles of public service, and so mm -hmm. one of the activities is to spend the day with mm -hmm. a public servant. And yeah. a public servant could be a police, a public servant could be a, a, a public school teacher, a public servant could be a government doctor. Spend the day with this public servant, find out what they do, what they think, so that even for you as a young person moving forward, then yeah. one, you, you could change your perspective or perceptions about what public service is, okay. and um, you find, you, you, you get to understand what public servants do and what the Constitution provides. And it's the same for the other, um, it's the same also for the other chapters, say even for the judiciary. Mm -hmm. What does a judge do? Uh, how yeah. does a judge um, um, uh, get to the point where they're, they're making a decision on, on a case? Yeah. I, I, one of the examples there is a case study. Right. where you have a young man who's stolen something and so you ask the reader if mm -hmm. you are the one deciding on this case what are the right. factors that you would that you should consider, that you should consider? do you judge. consider their tribe yeah. do you consider yeah. how much money they have do you consider right. the evidence so it's practical right. in a manner that engages the young people while helping right. them internalize what the constitution says and helping right. them engage with the society around them All right interesting yeah. thanks for that but then also you know you can't know or understand the constitution if you're not a reader. Even mm. in journalism, you must be a good reader and yeah. a good speaker. Yeah. But then the culture of reading as well, I think here's where you capture mm. the young people. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, I think it was one of the statistics that said, you know, people are not 
so uh, you know into reading especially in Kenya and there's people who launch like book clubs in Indian Indian to yeah. just help young people sit down and read the constitution mm. and read such a book that I feel like it's an explainer in yes. fact you should have called it the explainer <laughs> to the constitution <laughs> but it, it wouldn't have been so musical right. I think Teen's Guide to the Constitution is really yeah, nice it's but really soft it's, and subtle yes it's soft and subtle the yeah. cover is colorful uh, right. makes it really palatable to a young person Right. Yeah. Uh, I had mentioned where your, is it where your freedom begins? I'm aware your freedom and rights begin. Mm. That's where it's, it starts to end. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, in, the Bill of, in the Bill of Rights, uh, it's a, it, it actually has a list of that where, you know, you, it says you have a right to, you know, to education, your, your freedom, is etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Maybe for uh, young people who are watching right now, what should they get to learn, especially specific parts that speak to them? What do they have a right to? What is their freedom in terms mm -hmm. of this book as well? Uh, I, what, what you're referring to is called the section on limitation of, uh, exactly. the limitation of rights, which says you, are you have rights, but then right. there are certain rights that can be limited. There are those right. that cannot be limited, like your mm -hmm. right to life cannot exactly. be limited. Uh, it's not up for discussion. But right. then there are aspects to make it relevant, like now the right to picket, the right to demonstrate. That one as well is up for discussion to the extent to which, that, uh, the extent to which you can go. And I've given an example in right. the I've given an example in the book yeah. where you can have the right to picket because that's, the, that's, a, that's a civil and political right that you have, but then you cannot go picketing, say, some place like a hospital. Right. Or within or a school institution. Or a school, or a school uh, institution. We saw the tear gas situation happening that affected students. Yeah. Whether the, you're also what was you know? Yeah, all that, the you know. the information that was put out there. Mm -hmm. So you can you can you have a right to go demonstrate and picket and you know, all that. But you can't go do that in a hospital because then you're endangering the safety and right. you're endangering the welfare of um, those you're engaging with. And so as it said, where your right, where your right ends is mm -hmm. where mine begins, as far mm -hmm. as issues on limitation of rights yeah. is concerned. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe like a, an example of such a situation happening in the country. Are you able to pinpoint one? Well, it's, it's, it's already out there, the debate as to peaceful demonstrations, mm -hmm. yeah, peaceful demonstration. I think it's so, it's so um, weaved, it's become such, um, it's become such a, I don't want to use the, character, the word characteristic of, yeah. of our society, mm -hmm. but it's what we see out there. And it's what, when, when, whenever they say that we're having demonstration, is what most people fear. So right. that individuals are able to have, uh, individuals are able to have uh, peaceful demonstrations, but right. then there are a number of elements within society as well that right. uh, do not engage in, that, uh, in, in the peaceful demonstrations. And I think there also, mm. there's also another aspect about um, which is also out there uh, for people to discuss as right. to whether the government, as to whether institutions and even the police is supposed to give permission right. to, for people to demonstrate, which again is up, up, mm -hmm. up there for discussion. So what I right. like mm -hmm. about uh, the events around is that, especially for young people and those interested in moving the country forward, these are discussions that they are putting out there and uh, they're engaging in them in a, uh, quote unquote healthy manner because right. in, without having those discussions then it's very hard for us to to, um, to move forward but right. what i say looking at uh, where we are is to be guided by the constitution and to be guided by the rule of uh, rule of law and be it whether you're a citizen whether you're a political leader whether you're an institution it's very important for us to just observe and defend the constitution because i believe that is how we progress as a community Right. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, you, this book ministers a lot to Generation Zs, I yes. believe. Uh, yeah. And you'd love maybe to even have a session as well. Have you had sessions, including in schools, That's, maybe at events as well? That, is what, uh, that is what I'm hoping. That is what I'm hoping for. And okay. um, I'm, I'm, I'm available for that because okay. this is an area of great passion, great, great passion for me. Mm -hmm. So that it's not just having the book but yeah. now creating platforms where we can have conversations with young people. Again, right. staying on the topic of what's happening in the country. What mm. do you think a high schooler, because yes. we're having it as adults, right. yeah, young mm -hmm. adults and older adults are the people of the older generation. Mm -hmm. But what do you think a 13 year old or a 16 year old thinks mm -hmm. about, about, what is about this whole situation? Yeah. And how is that informing their mindset? 
and how perception. is that informing their engagement mm. with the government? How is that mm. informing their engagement with the neighbors? Because even as, their leadership system. Yes, and even the leadership. What what mm -hmm. what do they think? What mm. are their view? What kind of views are they now forming about leadership? And those are mm. now the conversations that right. we need to have with them at that stage. We don't wait for someone to get to thirty or right. thirty five. Yeah. That is when we want to try and um, uh, straighten them, if mm -hmm. I could use if I could use that word. You yeah. have instances where they talk about um, the constitution um, uh, promoting the welfare, promoting the welfare of the child. You have young people now with, in the age of social media. There are things that they do yeah. as young people, very advanced things that you hear yeah. about as an adult these days. Yeah. And you're or you never <laughs> did them in your younger <laughs> life. <laughs> you're and like, you're what? Like, this what? is happening today. What is yeah. happening today, you yeah. know? And mm. uh, it's they do not know. To an extent, they do not even know that they're committing, that they're committing um, a mistake. Right. I'll give an example of a decision that was made by a, a friend and a former classmate mm -hmm. about um, uh, teenage boys and teenage girls engaging in uh, sexual conduct. Mm -hmm. So what has been happening is if a boy and a girl meet, they are both teenagers and mm -hmm. uh, they engage in sexual activities. Right. Oftentimes, they are considered children to begin with. But right. then what happens is that uh, the boy is considered to have defiled the, yeah. the girl. In fact, he'd be guilty and he'd charged. Be, yes, he'd and be I think there was, there was one incident in the news outlet, I don't know if you exactly. saw. And uh, the, I think he's in jail. It, it, the juvenile, is it the juvenile yes. jail or something? I, I, it, it could be the one, it could be the one that uh -huh. uh, we are referring to. And so it was right. a whole, it was a whole discussion because Did you feel it was unfair for it to go that direction? Of jailing the young, the young, young man. Did, yes, yeah. it is. Yes, mm -hmm. or rather, yes, it was at mm -hmm. that particular point. It was very unfair because mm -hmm. these are both children. They yes. are young. Uh, they are young. A young boy and a young girl experimenting, being a teenager, and perhaps right. lacking mm -hmm. in the education, lacking in sex education, and how to right. go about this uh, these issues within society. And so then right. they are found. But the law, the, the law does not um, ignorance of the law. Yeah. It's no defense. But does it speak maybe to the gender? Because I think that's when gen the, the gender card comes in. Oh, she's a lady. Oh, once you're a victim, there's nothing we can say. I'm a, oh, it's a guy. Oh, go to jail. We can't hear you out, you know? Those ones now, and that's why we say the law is broad and touches on... Um, various aspects of society. So then okay. there's a legal aspect, there's a constitutional aspect, and then there's a societal aspect, right. where now the gender disparities and conversations about gender equality, equality come about. So yeah. then in this context, it's very important for us to educate our young people on right. what the law provides, so that they know that you sending nudes to your friends within school, you are committing mm -hmm. a crime because you're engaging in uh, pornography. Even right. if it's between the two of you, you could actually get into trouble. Right. You engaging in sexual conduct as per what um, the, ruling came, the ruling talked about. Yeah. A lot of things that it's important for them to get to understand what the law provides and get to understand what the constitution provides, how yeah. they can promote, uh, how they can promote their own safety and welfare, and how they can um, mobilize themselves as a generation to move yeah. forward. And that comes about to what you're talking about, creating platforms where we can engage young people in law-related and constitutional education. Uh, yeah. uh, in, in, in that spirit of what's happening in the country right now, um, for a young person, who could be found out there in a mess. And uh, here you are in trouble. But then you say your co the constitution is your saving grace. Maybe what are some of the, what are some, I'll say what's some of the specific parts that you can use to defend yourself against maybe um, a policeman, or maybe uh, I'll say who? Uh, let's, let's say an authority that has come to maybe arrest you. Mm. What are some of the rights that you can use, especially that are in the constitution, to defend yourself? Mm -hmm. For example, maybe it, it gets messy tomorrow. I'm praying not. I but pray so too. Yeah. So just in case how that happens, how, mm. how can you defend yourself? So the constitution provides, still in the, uh, the chapter on the Bill of Rights, on the rights of an arrested person. Right. What used to happen before, and why, if I could give that background, what used to happen yeah. before and uh, why that provision became very important was that there was a season in our country where you could be arrested arbitrarily, you could be arrested and you stay in the cells for much longer. Sometimes yeah. you, uh, uh, you don't go for trial for such a very long time. Sometimes right. you, are uh, you are disappeared, so yeah. to speak. And mm -hmm. so to address those issues, 
the mm -hmm. drafters of the constitution emphasize yeah. some of those some of the provisions within the chapter on the rights of an, uh, an arrested person and right. then there's also a, uh, accompanying legislation and a number of regulations that talk to that right. so one of the things that perhaps is not really practiced in our in our in our scenario is for an arrested person you must have an idea of why you've been arrested mm -hmm. you know the kind of things where you see in uh, uh, movies where right, as they're yeah. arresting you they tell you you have the right yeah, to stay <laughs> silent <laughs> <laughs> and anything you say will be used against you in yes, the, in the court of law. At, yeah, I always look at that and I'm imagining why can't our police... So there should be like a comeback for that when a policeman says... You I know, mean you should be there informed. There should be a, a constitutional comeback? Because that, that, that is one of your rights. You should uh -huh. be informed the reason as to why, why you're being arrested. You're being arrested. It, it, should not, be clear, like, it should be clear. I'm handcuffing you but exactly. be quiet. <laughs> you're like nope I can't be quiet. Yes, I'm it's, quoting it's, yeah, Article it's not 37. Like before, <laughs> it's not like before where someone will just budge into your house and arrest you. There are things like such warrants which need to be need need to be enforced and which detail uh, exactly what you are being arrested for. Yes. And once you've been arrested, uh, it's it's important for us to know where you've been taken to. Right. And then you have the right to representation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, in the event that you're not able to provide that for yourself, right. then the state should be should facilitate legal right. aid because you have a right to you have a right to representation, right. and then you need to be presented to court within a, a, a reasonable time period, not like what it used to be before, where you'd stay in the cells, you haven't gone for trial for uh, two months, uh, because that is now being used as a means to victimize you for a decision or an opinion that uh, that you express or an action that you made like now going going to the streets so it i i, I believe it balances uh, yeah. The constitution has a way of balancing society, protecting all interests, where it protects right. the interests of the citizens, it protects the interests of the constitution, and then it looks at the welfare of society. So there right. are things that used to happen that are not happening anymore. There are things that used to happen that should be happening better, and it is a journey, if I could right. use that word, as far as implementing the constitution is concerned. And young people mm -hmm. need to be informed and to engage so that they know where we are coming from, where right. we are right now, and where we are heading to. Because it's only then then that we can realize some of the promises that are in the Constitution. Right, fantastic. And, 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 and I also I'd, I'd like to say that we live in an era or a generation of social injustices. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, there's this recent one where, you know, there's this boy who fell in love with this campus chick and then I can pull up with a knife. But then it, it seems like these issues are escalating. Mm -hmm. in, in the spirit of actually this book, is there maybe a solution to it? And uh, that is why I said there is the law, there is the constitution, there is society. And this needs to work together in terms of the law enriching society and society enriching the law. Mm -hmm. Already, for an instance like that, we have um, uh, means and ways of securing justice for the victim and ensuring justice for um, the, um, the victim's family. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. in the event that someone was stabbed and it, uh, it, it gets to a point where the person died, Sorry, then it Sorry. goes to court, it's either manslaughter or it's murder. So the right. law addresses that. But right. then some of the cases that we've uh, had right. is while the law is doing what it's doing, right. you have young people who are continually, um, are continually experiencing mental health illnesses. They are not... Right. You'd say they're not even fully equipped on how to handle relationships. Nobody's talking to them on these issues. How right. do you handle conflict in right. the event that you are in a relationship? Who are the p individuals that you're able to talk to or refer to if you're having if if you're having uh, if you're having problems? And then some of these issues go unchecked for such a long time, so right. that someone's personality, uh, with time, someone's personality becomes grounded, and then they've gotten away with so many things that eventually do not um, help them or help or help society. So right. in advanced uh, in, in advanced cases and I think with concerted effort and a lot of uh, being deliberate if I could right. use it that way mm -hmm. you have the law working as it should because mm -hmm. there's they still need for accountability okay they still need for justice but mm -hmm. then you complement that with the the societal aspects and, right. it, and the societal aspects could be family could right. be medicine could be mental health issues so how can this come together to help address some of the uh, some of the challenges that we face or uh, some of the challenges that we are facing as a society right yeah. great thanks for that explanation uh, I've, I've remembered something um, 
Does this scenario that keeps on popping up in your profession, uh, I'll give an example, let's say, for example, if somebody invaded mm -hmm. my home, mm -hmm. and maybe, yes, I have a right to, 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 uh, to, to own a gun, I lawfully own a gun, and then they invaded my home, and then they tried to hurt my wife or my kid, and then I shot them, I shoot them, and then it happens they, they pass out or they die. Mm -hmm. So when that case is taken to court, um, am I convicted as a murderer? Or will you quote uh, some of the specific avenues of the Constitution mm. or in your legal profession that highlight that I, I killed this person in self-defense and protection? And uh, if just in case it doesn't go my way, will I be considered a murderer? Mm. And, and I think that's the beauty of uh, that's the beauty of law and standing standing law and, uh, and 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 practicing it because in the eyes of uh, the layman this is someone who's died. Yes. So automatically, someone goes aliwa when mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is it given. Okay. But through your legal education and even through your legal practice, now there are certain elements of, um, of, of, of what now um, adds up to this crime. Yeah. So then there's murder, mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's, uh, there's manslaughter, and some of the things then they look at is whether you had uh, premeditated. Right. Yeah. This well, is like well, a whole yes, it's, it's planned a whole <laughs> schedule. <laughs> yes. Like you did a whole Like shaman, you actually you know. planned, you knew this person is uh -huh. going to come at 10, and so you are prepared, your gun was loaded, and you are mm. actually waiting behind the doors for this person to come. So that one right. was what they say, menstrual. It was like premeditated, premeditated, premeditated murder. Premeditated murder. And then okay. you acted. You, mm -hmm. you, could have, you, you, you could have had a reason for it. Right. You knew this person was going, coming to invade your home. So you mm. had the motivation. And mm -hmm. then now uh, you acted on that motivation. Okay. Yes. So that now that one, that's where you have the murder, first degree, and you know, those well, are the first things degree, that they're going to consider. Exactly. What about a felony? A, f a felony keeps on popping up a, a lot. Uh, examples of it, maybe? If a felony now is not, say, if, if, if I could use the... Uh, layman, layman's it's not language. criminal. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's not the extent. It's not the extent it's to the murder. Then now you yeah. have uh, uh -huh. you have all these other you have all these other um, aspects that contribute to that. Right. So then, if it's not like in this instance, if you could go back to that, then it's not murder in that degree. Yeah. So now that's oh, there's like degrees, first yes. degree, second degree. Exactly. It's like intense, more intense, <laughs> extremely intense, <laughs> and now blowing up. Yes, you know? depending on those, uh, depending on okay. those elements. And uh -huh. then now that's where you have the man manslaughter. And then now during that whole process, during okay. trial, mm -hmm. and maybe sentencing, you are told to talk about, or your counsel now is asked to talk about um, mitigating factors. So the, some of the mitigating factors could be like, oh, I was sad, I was mm. angry, we were in the middle of a fight. So can that a be lot taken as a reason in defense? Yes, in it court? can. Yes, yes, yes oh. it can. Say okay. for someone who's, uh, that is why they take people for uh, mental exams. And they, right. I think they, it's, it's one of the requirements all through. Mm -hmm. So that you have to be, if they're going to prove that you actually premeditated this and they're going to convict you with murder, they have yeah. to prove that you're in the right mind, mind mm -hmm. for you to plan it and uh, premeditate it and actually act Execute on it. So that it is now. why now they take mm -hmm. you for the um, uh, mental exams, just to yeah. know that you're in the right. So there's a lot that right. goes to... Um, Representing someone in court, mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes to convicting someone, there's a lot that goes to sentencing someone, mm -hmm. and I think those are some of the um, developments that yeah. we're seeing as far as uh, uh, the judiciary is concerned and as far as the law is concerned. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot to talk about. Uh, we'll get to about you now and some of your achievements and successes in just a bit. But uh, the right to life with the suicides that are happening everywhere, left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. uh, there's somebody who's telling me that the it Africa time when you you'll be found to have even planned to tr try to you know commit suicide you mm -hmm. definitely be jailed if mm -hmm. you don't die they'll take you to hosi uh, madao kipona unenda jela kufungwa. Yeah. but I'm it's your life you know somebody was arguing cinema yeah. you may decide to end but then at the end of the day life is sacred the mm -hmm. bible says that the bible is also another you know constitution mm -hmm. but then also the constitution says you have a right to life and yeah. no any other person should you know interfere with it maybe you can talk about exactly. that as well to just paint a exactly. picture exactly and i think that's that's a conversation that uh, 
we are having at different levels because one of the things we need to appreciate that the law, and in this instance the constitution, is a reflection of society. It's a reflection of uh, where we are as a society. So there are things that work, work well for us. There are things that we appreciate. There are things that we approve that perhaps um, um, are not in, 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 in other jurisdictions. So say, for example, things like abortion. You right. have uh, instances where in other states and in other countries it's become legalized. Actually, the US, the, the US is battling that. There's some states where, I think, yeah. was it in Utah? Well, they're saying uh, they completely do away with it. And there's, some, there's even activists and, 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 exactly. and, 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 and people like you in the legal profession are like, nope, there's people who are pro-choice. Pro-choice. And you it's know, a whole, it's like a whole debate. Now. There's pro-choice, yeah. pro pro... Mm -hmm. pro yeah. And even the gender part comes the in. The gender yeah. aspect. So right. you have conversations such as um, abortion, abortion rights, if I could say that. You have conversations about suicide now. Uh, you have conversations about what is it called euthanasia, whether someone in the event that you you become a vegetable, God forbid, <laughs> and uh, now con people need to decide, do we switch yeah. it off so that we stop? So that's a but right they, to Is life. it also included in our Kenyan constitution? Like, come on to him, go on your son, and it feels like <laughs> no. they've drained every resource, and now it's time for them to go. No. Like, the constitution just give more, it's more or less like a guideline, like it gives the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then now inside this house you have all these many rooms and you have all these many small cupboards. So now what happens is the constitution has provided it and then on in certain instances where that is not available, it demands that parliament now passes laws, then that will give effect to a certain provision. Like now right. it will say the right to life. Now it is upon us, depending on where we are as society and depending on where we are uh, with these conversations, that now we are going to say we need to enact a bill or a law or a policy that now talks about yeah. uh, euthanasia, euthanasia, for example. Mm -hmm. And still, based on the right to life, you have things such as um, uh, whether people should be hanged, have gone blank yeah. on the term on the uh -huh. term exactly. Yeah, I Those think it's a, it's a, I also landed on it lately. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully you'll remember. <laughs> Tafadali, <laughs> Tafadali Kumbuka. <laughs> Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so those are conversations we have because uh, being hanged a, a, lo a while ago, it was yeah. something that was allowed. I, I think I was even reading a story about the last hangman of, yeah. uh, of, of, our, can of our country. So death sentence. Yes, yes. that's it. I that's remember death it. sentence. Death mm -hmm. sentence. So but should, why can't they just equate it to life sentence? Meaning you'll never get out and Ex you're spending a whole lifetime in jail. Yes. Other than like you know, them ending your that life. That is it. That's and painful, now, and now those, are, those are some of the developments and conversations that are going on. Because people say that uh, people, you, you suffer so much when right. now you know that your life is going to be taken. Right. And in the, the, the jurisdictions that used to practice that, there was a lot of conversations as to the methods of, right. of um, executing a death sentence, yeah. hanging. Which now infringes even on the right to life. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So those exactly. are the, and yeah. again, it reflects on the wishes of a society. It reflects on what, where society is and what that society wants. Is it a society that prefers, if you've murdered someone, it is an eye for an eye. You go get, yeah. uh, you go get hanged. Is mm -hmm. it a society where uh, abortion is now becoming legal? Is this a society yeah. where uh, like in other instances where we are, you could attempted suicide, then you are considered to have committed a crime. Mm -hmm. While in other jurisdictions you committed suicide, it's, it's treated now as a social issue. Right. And a cultural issue as opposed mm -hmm. to a legal issue. So mm -hmm. And religion comes uh, in, yes, especially in our country. <laughs> religion also. <laughs> you like, Mungu wako you. You know, Mungu wapendi yeah. But you know, the law is completely, totally different from, yeah. you know, yeah. religion. So I, yeah. I, and I agree with you, there is law. Yeah. then there is society and both right. should be and both voices together. really matter and, and they're loud both both voices matter exactly yeah. exactly both yeah. both voices matter because even for the constitution that we have today it is a reflection yeah. of where we have come from right and where we'd like to go, to go. so we yeah. are with it in the present but then right. we are in between two forces right. where we have come from where perhaps uh, some of the rights and freedoms that we are enjoying today mm -hmm. we did not have right. and we and now it's giving us what we did not have but then mm -hmm. it's also requiring and demanding of us to look into the future right. into what kind of uh, what kind of society we'd like to have and right. it gives us the um, tools and yeah.
what we need and the how to go about it and, how to you know. go about. and that's why we have people like you you've made me remember there's somebody who i think there's a move or a directive to you know have uh section 37 repealed or maybe edited out in terms of you know picketing demonstrating and whatnot and people are like no <laughs> we need and then there's somebody who said now we need again to sit down and see how we can redraft this constitution mm -hmm. but then there's also been voices that have been constantly vocal in this space the likes of kinamatha karu who said yeah. huh? they were part of uh, actually the first the second or first drafters of mm -hmm. the constitution mm -hmm. maybe you can expand on that as well well I, that speaks to the amendment of the constitution yeah and the amendment process, the constitution is not static, not that it's been written 10 years ago and now we have to stay with it the way it is for the next um, 100 or, or whatever. So it's a living document. That is why some people call it a living document. Mm -hmm. So that what it contains is a reflection of, again, where we are as a society, it's a reflection of our hopes and dreams and wishes as a society. Mm -hmm. So in the event that 10 years, not even 10 years, in the event that next year, we right. decide that now we want to go. We've decided that uh, this constitution and this mandamano, these are things that now we do not want to see. The right to picketing, mm -hmm. it's not adding value. So now we go back and uh, sit down and say, now we are taking away, mm -hmm. we are repealing the section that provides for civil yeah. and political civil and political rights. And the constitution yeah. now provides for processes right. that someone should follow right. when amending the constitution. constitution. So again, it boils down to our conversations as a society, All what right. we want, where mm -hmm. we are, and where we want to head to. And I feel like it's, it's a volatile conversation, especially when the temperatures are like this. Depends you on know. your interests. <laughs> right. So I think that's when political interests come in yeah. as well. Yeah. And I think it will be, it, it will be interesting to see how that will go. But exactly. I know it, it won't far. happen soon. And how, and how, far, it, far. And how right. far it will go. Now back to you. You have quite a remarkable, impressive resume or CV. Uh, you are... You, 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 you have years of experience working as a political and civil society and institution also served with the Kenyan government, a Kenyan government as the presidential speech writer mm -hmm. and chief of staff in yes. the former administration yes. or maybe many more of the previous administrations. It's, well, it's the same administration. Or same administration because <laughs> you're still in there. Yes, but, but it's still in, it's, it's in the previous um, the previous regime. Uh, but here, uh, j just before you, you proceed, uh, you're also a 2018 Obama Foundation leader yes. and been voted, uh, you've been voted by your peers as one of the most influential young Africans, yes. which is something that should be re uh, re to be commended yeah, about. I was so excited. Congratulations. Was so excited. And this happened in 2018. It happened in 2018, right, right. after we'd come from the Obama Foundation um, the Obama, Obama Foundation gathering, mm -hmm. which was a platform post uh, post President Obama's um, being president, right. he, he needed a platform where he could engage he could engage young people, and that right. was one of it. And bringing together leaders from mm -hmm. across Africa just mm -hmm. to teach them, to train them, and to give them more confidence as as young emerging leaders. So that mm -hmm. happened in 2018. We went all the way to South Africa. It was about a week. Mm. Ten days of engagement, and I got to meet him. Which you is met Obama. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when he was Porter's. <laughs> yes. No, no, that was after he was, he was Porter's. Oh, after he was Porter's. That was after he was post Porter's. Porter's. That's post, okay. post Porter's. So that is why right. he started. Uh, that is why he started the engagement, which was really exciting. And then mm. I come home, and uh, I get that award, and I think that has opened various other um, doors, doors and opportunities, and opportunities mm. moving forward. So it's also the same period now. After I'd spent a considerable time within the civil society. I wanted a new experience, I, I, I wanted new challenges, and uh, given my interest in the issues of law, uh, leadership, and governance, I felt drawn to uh, what was happening in the governance sector, right. in the public administration sector. And mm -hmm. after um, uh, a couple of months as a political analyst and a governance analyst, right. uh, remember we were quite uh, quite a number of us at that time. Right. Now I moved into I moved into public service, and right. as fate will have it, I was now the um, uh, researcher and speech writing in mm -hmm. what was before the PSU. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you heard of it. So I spent a number of years there, and uh, for ab ab about two years, a year and a half, two years, I got a secondment to the um, 
uh, Ministry of Sports, Culture and Heritage as it was then, right. as now the Chief of Staff to the Cabinet Secretary. So it's been... Those are big positions. <laughs> it's been a learning <laughs> they experience. A lot of, they come with a lot of money as well. I, I, no. Really? Oh no? My God. You mean, oh my what God. do you mean? What do one you mean? one what of the things mean? that we say huh? about the public service is that huh? you go there to serve the public. Wow. It's not, and I'll be honest, it's it's It's, it's a perception. <laughs> In short, it's a perception. Yes. Like people think, yeah. once you're there, you're... Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and, and that is one of the misconceptions and perceptions that I think um, need to be addressed in terms yeah. of looking for public office or looking for state office right. for the resources that you're able to, to, benefit, to, to benefit yeah. from it as opposed uh -huh. to us having conversations as right. to how you're going to engage the public because government is so important uh, there are so many things, despite all the noise that is going on, if our government was not stable and functioning to a certain degree, uh, because it's up there for conversations for, for a number of people, there, there's so much that it's doing, there's so much that is functioning, and there's so many public servants <laughs> who are very dedicated to seeing their country prosper. Yeah. yeah. To mm. an extent, if we do not have a functional system, if we do not have a functional government, there are certain things that, you know, uh, we, we wouldn't be where we are today. And so right. public service is critical. And if in the event that you need to engage with the public service, you need to come and um, work with the public service or just partner with the public service, I think it's, it's, it's critical in terms of moving our country forward. Yeah. There's this mentorship program that, um, that I'm engaged in. It's mm -hmm. called Hesabika Trust. Okay. And what it does is that it's trying to develop a um, pipeline of, um, uh, of young graduates right from uh, college until the time that they are engaged in, um, engaged in the public service. So it's mm -hmm. a one-year internship where they are um, um, attached. It's more like an internship. You're attached to various government institutions. Mm -hmm. So you are in there and you get to learn about what public service is. Yes, so uh, again, some of those conversations where uh, someone says, when I got in, mm -hmm. I did not, I just thought, you know. I like thought I've <laughs> arrived. <laughs> yes, you've arrived, one. And right. secondly, you thought it's the, it's the same things where people say for public servants, majority of them or a good number of them, you go, you hang your coat. Those mm. are season for hanging coats. Mm -hmm. Until now, I'm told yeah. that uh, during, Kibaki's, uh, during Kibaki's early yeah, era, era mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he introduced something called performance performance contracting. So that as yeah. you're getting into the service, as you're starting your year, your right. financial year, then you have certain... It's like a sport check. Yes, it's, what it's, did you it's, do? it's like what a sport happens? check. So accountable. That accountable. You become right. very accountable in terms of using mm -hmm. your time and resources for government. Yeah. And so what that did, it dealt a little bit with um, this hanging of courts and you know, mm, uh, and, yeah. and aspects like that. So you right. have young people saying that they find it very fulfilling Right. Because the kind of decisions that you make as, 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 as a public servant, they, they have a, a ripple effect. Right. Yeah? And then if you, if you develop a policy today, right. one, it takes time to develop that policy. You develop that policy is going to affect generations and generations and generations to come. Right. So what I try to do in the, in, 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 in the spaces I am in and with the young people and when we have conversations about the public service right. is to focus on, 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 on um, if I use the word, on the things that add value to the conversation. Yeah. You are, uh, there, are, there are public servants who are doing a really, really good job. Yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you have some of them who've been in the public service for such a long time and they're dedicated yeah. and they are our parents, they are our brothers, they are our right. sisters, they are our aunties. They're within the public service and doing an amazing, amazing job. Right. Of course, within every society, you're going to have one or two um, um, bad fruits, if mm -hmm. I could use that, but that should not be um, an indication of what, of, of what, uh, of what government is. Yeah, yeah and there's that connotation of slow service, like Ulianda, Ukaku, I'm okay, come to a Leander lunch, a Karudisa, and Nane, yeah. Oh, I'm sick, I can't talk today. Mm. You know, there's so many stories, you know, carved towards mm. that, that, that. And of, side, and of course, know. it's the it's the ones that uh, it's the negative ones, ones that yeah. normally that that normally make it out there, mm. as opposed of to the <laughs> <laughs> of course, but of course, as opposed to the positive ones. Right. And may I yeah. not be quoted? I'm not saying that uh, the public service is perfect. Uh -huh. It is not. There is no perfect institution. There's no perfect.
perfect country. There's no perfect way of doing things. Yeah. But then it's, it's looking at what has been established, what has been there, and where right. we want to go. If mm -hmm. you take an example of uh, service, then you have things like uh, access to information, for yeah. instance. So working together with the government, and remember that time I was in, uh, was in civil society, working together with the government in a manner right. that promotes uh, efficient service. Yeah? Yeah. So now the Access to Information Act, for instance, says right. that in the event that you've gone to a public, uh, to a public institution to access public um, uh, information, right. then it should be prompt, it should be given to you within a particular timeline, and right. this is, it should be given to you in a manner that you, that you understand. And so right. that gets implemented. Right. Within, uh, within the service. So right. there's a lot that is improving. Right. Digitization is one of the things that mm. we talk about now. And recently it's they launched uh, a digital, it's called e the e-citizen platform. Yes, the well. e-citizen the e e platform in a bid to, in a mm -hmm. and, with all, and with all the controversy, be, the, be that as it may. But mm -hmm. then there's an effort now to digitize and to reduce paper and to improve, to improve yeah. service delivery. You have now people paying for government services through M-Pesa. So it's right. a lot of, there's a lot that's happening yeah. And uh, the conversations I have with young people is, let's promote what is good. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Let us give credit where credit belongs. And then we work towards um, improving what yeah. is not working. Because it's for all of us, it's for our country, and it's for our benefit and for our welfare. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm told we have to end it here, but I have like five more questions, but five. I'll just ask one. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, there's, there's a certain uh, perception that people get when you're in a certain profession, even mm. in journalism, they believe, oh, you're, you have money. Mm. As a lawyer, they believe you're very tough and you know everything and you're, oh, you can see through people when they've done things. Uh, do you get that a lot so, at some point? I'd or say, sometimes? I'd say one, one of the... Uh, uh, one of my pride is belonging in the is, is belonging in the profession and uh, for most lawyers and uh, even people in the bench we are t we are we say we are called learned and my uh, learned <laughs> friend <laughs> my learned hey. friend and learned is not sorry. because <laughs> <laughs> learned is not because you've read so many books at the same time learned right. is because you have the opportunity to learn and ingratiate yourself in different disciplines so that I can be a medical doctor I can be a civil engineer I mean a medical lawyer I can be a family lawyer, can so many uh, sectors that you can yeah. always fit in, and that is where the learned friend, uh, yeah. the learned friend, uh, comes in. Right. And uh, for anyone, for any young person out there who has an interest in learning law, I think uh, we have as many uh, institutions that are now coming up to uh, to help young people get to where get to where they want to be. I think it's very fulfilling if that is what you set to do, because beyond the glamour of it and beyond calling each other fancy names, there's also the aspect of working with community and actually changing lives and actually contributing to the welfare of the country and your society. So it's, right. it's good. All right, I think we can, end it, we can end it there. You are also an advocate of the high court. You have yes. so many <laughs> titles, my good friend. Thank oh my you. goodness. Thank you. you know, uh, uh, maybe if, if people want to purchase this book and uh, access you, give you feedback, mm. is there maybe an email, is there a number, is there a shop outlet that they can get? And yes. This is your camera. Yes, yes, yes. It's available at Nuria store on Moy Avenue. If, and, and they also have an online art, uh, outlet, so you can check at Nuria store where you can get a copy of the book. The book goes for 850 because, again, we need to be in a situation where we can print many more. So you can get your book. I am available for conversations and especially right. for young people. The more platforms we have to engage with each other and have conversations like this, the better. Right. For, the, for the benefit of our country. So you can reach out to me on my social media handle, Sandra Ochola, across board, mm -hmm. and uh, we can pick up those discussions. And uh, I'll there's be happy. There's a number and an email? And there's there's a, a number? <laughs> it's on your platform as well? Yes, on it's, the on, book. My platform. it's on my right. platform. You're free to give them if you yes. want to? Sure, yeah. please, you can give them so that they purchase this book. Very important. For the purchasing of the book? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you could reach out to me on Ochola Sandra at gmail.com. And right. uh, we can start the conversations from there. from there. And if you need the book, then Nuria Store. If you are within, uh, if you are within Nairobi, Moy Avenue, and you can get your copy. It's only go. It's going for only eight hundred and fifty shillings. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. I feel like we should have had like another <laughs> session know. again. I know. We can but talk about it the whole day. A lot, man, for a yeah. whole day. But
But thank you so much. Thank you too. And nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Right. Looking forward to the next one already. Please, heaven, the <laughs> universe, you. you had it. All right, I've been speaking to Sandra Ochola. She's an advocate of the High Court, she's former president of Korea Speech Writer, former chief of staff in the Ministry of Sports, and currently works at State House. Okay, you know. Thank you so much. I'm Sakwa. See you next time right here on Why in the Morning. Thank <laughs> you.